I'm Jeff Allen for California CEO. The wait is over for the city of Riverside and those charged with business event planning in the city. The newly renovated Riverside Convention Center is now open. After nearly two years of construction at a cost of over $40 million, the new facility has been entirely made over and expanded. Improvements include the addition of new meeting rooms, a large exhibit hall, and ballrooms, improved concourses, public Wi-Fi, and cell phone charging stations. The outside of the building was also redesigned to reflect the surrounding area's blend of modern and Spanish Revival architecture. At a recent VIP preview of the new facility, we spoke with Riverside City officials about their impressions of the new convention center and what it means in terms of the short and long-term economic benefits to the city and region. I have the privilege of standing here with Mayor Rusty Bailey of the city of Riverside and the rookie mayor, city of Riverside. It's nice to have you, sir. Thank you for taking the time. Uh-oh, the rookie. What, what's going to come next? <laughs> well, hopefully it's going to be a successful, successful tenure as mayor of the city. Tonight, very special event, we have the grand unveiling of the new Riverside Convention Center. Your first impressions. Wow. Wow. Right? And that's what the community asked us to, to give them, to present to them a, a truly wow moment. And I think even walking inside, looking at the dramatic features of the architecture, walking inside, seeing the dramatic um, configuration of the lights and the stage, I, I was overwhelmed. Mr. Mayor, the city has taken a, a, a much more aggressive stance and in really stepping up its game in terms of luring people to the area, in terms of making it more of a destination city for visitors and now for business. Why is it really important that the city now turn its attention to bringing businesses, businesses from outside of the area into the area of Riverside? Well, it's jobs, right? And we have an incredible array of universities and Riverside City College with graduates every year leaving our city. And so I think the, to answer your question bluntly is that we need to provide more jobs to keep those the, that brain gain here and prevent the brain drain. We've incredibly talent, talented human beings from UCR, from Los Angeles University, from California Baptist University, uh, and from Riverside City College that, again, just don't have... Um, uh, the ability to, 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 to find uh, the job that they desire here. And so as we grow the pie of uh, amenities, such as this tonight, the, the convention center, such as the Fox Theater, Municipal Auditorium, and that array of entertainment and tourist destinations, Riverside Aquatic Center being one of those as well, um, you know, we, I think we will see more of those uh, talented individuals wanting to, to live here and not just uh, work here. What about some of the other things that are going on in the city that might be kind of an interesting hook? We know that uh, the city is kind of in an interesting area as far as transportation is concerned. Freeway closed. There's a lot of work being done right now. How important is the infrastructure in getting those projects done? Infrastructure is everything, especially transportation infrastructure. And the investment you make you know, pays dividends for generations. And, and we've gone through an upgrade to our electrical system and, and through, through and, uh, the Riverside Renaissance truly was, I call it from guts to brains, it wasn't just electrical systems, but water, electric, roads, and um, uh, you know, the sewer, uh, the, the runoff, and, and then you get into the next level, which is our parks and our libraries. And then you get to the next level, which is the Fox Theater, a historic building, 1929, Gone with the Wind premiered there, Municipal Auditorium, uh, Soldiers Memorial. And then this convention center that will bring truly hundreds of thousands of tourists and conventioneers to the city each year for in perpetuity. We know that any city would like to uh, feel like it is a, uh, w it welcomes a diverse number of businesses in, in, a, in a whole area of industries. But is there a particular industry that you feel is probably particularly ripe for growth in the city right now? Are there certain areas or, um, uh, or industries, types of businesses that you would like to see more of in the city? Well, we want to have an array, right? We want to have choice. I think that's what people are more and more used to, you know, with the, uh, the instant gratification and the information age. They, they want choice. And so we're not going to focus just on one industry. Um, I, I talk about our competitive advantages we have in the city. There are four main ones, the university and colleges and really the educational institutions, our public utility, our historic and vibrant downtown, and our community spirit. And I think that though that mix of, of the recipe is, very, is, is, is solid. We can compete with anybody as a city you know, nationwide, and we've competed globally, and we've won awards, number one Intelligent Community of the Year in 2012, um, you know, top ten in can-do cities in the nation. 
and we, we continue to, to respond to over 200,000 calls for service on 311. Uh, you know, that's Riverside residents. We continue to, to look at ways to connect our universities and colleges for that, that white collar, uh, you know, job force. But we also need manufacturing as well, that blue collar uh, workforce. And, and, and so I think that there's a home for everybody, that there should be a job for everybody in our city at, at the different layers and levels. And, and so, uh, you know, we're, we're going to continue to to just lay the groundwork and provide um, the infrastructure so that businesses know that this is the place to be and this is the place, and for residents, for this is the place to live. And I think we've proven that time and time again over the last few years because of the investments we've made in some of those resources I've already talked about. Uh, final question. Projects, programs, developments moving forward. What are you really excited about? in the, the year ahead, in 2014 and beyond? Yeah, you know, we're doing a feasibility study on streetcars and transportation infrastructure in the city. And, and again, that's going to be so important for Southern California in the long run, where 2035, we're going to double our population. I just We can't continue to do the same things and get in our cars and pay, you know, uh, all, of the, all of the costs for operating an, an automobile, which by five hundred dollars a month for, you know, wouldn't we want that money to go back into the the local economy instead of into the automobile culture, getting on the freeways, gas, you know, tags, insurance, all those things. Well, so streetcars can do that. Ten minute walk to Magnolia and University Avenue, our two main arterials. Right there's there's two hundred thousand people that live, work, or go to school. Two hundred thousand of a three hundred thousand um, uh, population city that 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 live within a ten minute walk of that. And so we're going to be looking at that L corridor that connects all the universities and colleges, that gets people out of their cars, that improves health, that improves air quality, that reinvests and truly brings investment and economic development along those corridors. Property values tend to double along streetcar um, uh, you know, corridors. Um, uh, return on the investment is three, four, five times to one. The 60 cities that are engaged in this right now either have them in or are working on uh, bringing streetcars back to their city in some respects or to their city for the first time. Um, we're the 59th largest city in the country, right? We are larger than Cincinnati. We are larger than St. Louis. We are larger than Pittsburgh. We're a big city, and we need to continue to think of ourselves as a big city. And this would be a great investment for future generations so they wouldn't need a car to live in Riverside. And in Southern California, we need to start thinking about different modes of transportation and different linkages to, you know, uh, modes of transportation, whether it's Metrolink, whether it's bus, whether it's streetcars, whether it's bike, and, and provide that, again, that choice and that array of, of transportation uh, to potential um, uh, business, uh, you know, employees, uh, again, students, residents. People are going to demand that. You see the, 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 the younger generations uh, being, you know, attracted to places like Portland and Seattle. Um, you know, Phoenix, Arizona, and so we can be that for, for Southern California and inland Southern California specifically with, with a project like uh, Streetcars. I'm standing now with Mr. Ted Wegland. He is the president of Rain Cross Hospitality Corporation. You folks are putting on the party. Give us your kind of your appraisal so far of what you've seen and how excited you are about the grand opening of this facility. Well, we've anticipated it for a year and a half now, but, but to be frank with you, um, as we saw it develop and be built, it, we knew it was going to exceed our expectations. So there was a lot of build up to it, and the most exciting thing really is seeing people come in tonight and actually see the facility themselves, because we've watched it grow and develop and be built and then furnished you know, over the months. So we've sort of anticipated Riverside's reaction to it and meetings planners reaction to it and so this was the first real opportunity we had to get a feeling on what people think about this building and it's about what we expected. Well let's talk about what's what's new what's better what's yeah. different about it. Well we've got about 20,000 or a little bit more square feet in the building right now but but importantly what we have is we've got a new building with new technology throughout including wireless and we've got and now about eight large rooms that are really versatile and functional and they can be broken in up into about 22 or 23 rooms so so the functionality of the convention center is just superior but one of the things that we think is most attractive about the convention center to meeting planners is
is really that it doesn't look like a convention center. And, and, and that was purposeful, and the city did a great job on it. What we're, what we're trying to do with the convention center is, is sell it as more of a boutique hotel type look. And it really fits in well with Riverside itself because Riverside is the sixth largest city in Southern California, but it's one of the smallest towns in America at the same time. And that's one of the reasons why groups will come to Riverside. They're treated like family, they're treated like friends, and, and there's sort of a real affinity that's built up over the time in Riverside. And so now we have a convention center that in every way has superior design and has the sort of a warm look and feel to it that you simply don't have in other convention centers. M most of them are very sterile, and ours was too for many years. So we, we think we've got a superior product to sell. There may be some redundancy here in the question I'm going to ask you, but, but how advantageous is it for organizations who want to hold an event or meetings, how advantageous is it for them to do that here as opposed to go to any of the other venues around the area, some of the venues that were maybe uh, folks are more familiar with maybe in Ontario and some of the other surrounding cities? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question and, and the answer really is this. We've always said this about Riverside and it's true, we can't escape it. We are centrally located. So when we go out and we reach out to convention groups and they're drawing individuals, attendees, guests from throughout Southern California, there simply is no other place that is more centrally located for people to come to a convention. So we're close to Ontario. The, the airport is only about a half hour away, if that, and, and so we're close, we're right in the center. But what we have that is different from the other convention centers is we have a downtown urban active center. So for example, somebody can leave the convention center and in 100 yards be at, at the you know 300 room Marriott Hotel or they can be at the Hyatt Hotel or one block they can be at a National Historic Landmark Mission Inn Hotel and Spa. And uh, they've got bars literally and restaurants, you know, stones throw across from the convention center. So it, it is it is critically important that we have the new convention center here to sort of match the quality of the product that we've brought into Riverside over the last 20 years. This sort of was, it was the last piece of the puzzle in terms of really changing the game for downtown Riverside. And it's location, 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 and it's quality product. Now what we have at the convention center here, as was mentioned um, earlier, is that we, we have a chef who, you know, just got off ABC's television show, The Taste. And what is the significance of that? The significance of that is that we have this sort of boutique hotel feel here, and we don't have the standard rubber chicken. We, we've got a guy who is pulling together extraordinary dishes, and that is very unusual in the convention business. You simply don't have it. What you normally have is a large national food company who puts a presence in a convention center. They could be from Poughkeepsie, but we've got him right here locally living, working in the community, and serving our people as if they're family. That's a big difference. I'm here with City Councilman Mike Gardner. Mike Gardner, uh, City Councilman. District Ward 1. And Councilman Gardner, nice to see you. Thanks for coming out. It's a pleasure. This is kind of an exciting time for you because the Riverside Convention Center is right here in your ward. So right here in your backyard. How's that feel? Uh, it really is amazing. The convention center is going to be such a driver for business in the downtown. Um, not just people from Riverside who will be coming to events here, but the people will bring from outside the city. And many of those, I think, will like our city well enough that they're going to come back after the convention bring their families. Now, this is, is really kind of a, a, a momentous, I think, time for the city because we've seen so much development and growth and improvements downtown around the Mission Inn area and the museums and uh, so all the arts and culture amenities are starting to kind of come together. What is that like for you in terms of seeing this growth in your area happen and happen so quickly over a short space of time over the, just the last really two or three years? It really has you know, been escalating and has peaked in the last two or three years and it it's nice to have the problem of worrying about events competing with each other at the same time. And that's where we are now. We're, we're at the point where we have to worry how one event will affect another one. And that's, that is really good for the city. Other changes obviously going on in your area too. We've seen changes uh, across, the, uh, across the freeway and uh, in the industrial and commercial areas over there. Talk a little bit about the uh, continuing economic growth in your area with respect to growing businesses. Well, Ward 1 includes the north side of Riverside, out North Main Street, as well as the Hunter Business Park. And those are two areas where I expect that we are going to see really significant growth in job-producing sorts of things. I'm, I'm targeting 
um, higher tech industries, uh, maybe some medical research to go with the med school. Um, uh, plastics manufacturers really like that area of town and they like Riverside because of our low utility rates and the quality of our electrical power. So those sorts of job producing facilities are what I see coming in those areas. Let's talk a little bit about your thoughts just uh, looking into 2014. We're here uh, 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 and in the years ahead for your ward, uh, Councilman, uh, you've been at this a while and, and you've been a, a staple here in uh, the city and you've seen a lot of growth. Tell us about your kind of your level of enthusiasm and your optimism for growth here in the future. I, I believe 2014 is going to be really a pivotal year. It's where we kind of get over the hump. Um, we are getting through the recession now. Sales tax is growing a little bit. Property tax will lag not too far behind. But if you go watch our planning counter, we're getting more and more people coming in with actual plans to develop a project or requesting information about how do I do a project? And that's the kind of thing that we need to see in the city. So this really is going to be a key year for us. Councilman Mike Gardner, Ward 1, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. According to Raincross Hospitality's Ted Wegland, 70 events had already been scheduled for the new convention center before the facility had opened its doors for the grand opening. He and other officials with the Convention and Visitors Bureau, the city, and the Riverside Area Chambers of Commerce are hopeful that an improving economy and early bookings are an indication of good things to come in terms of visitor revenue and long-term economic development in the area. For more information on the new Riverside Convention Center, visit RiversideCVB.com. And for more business news, be sure to check back with us often at CaliforniaCEO.net. I'm Jeff Allen.